Hey everybody out there in clarinet land, this is Pat O'Keefe, clarinet player with the duo project Willful Devices, along with computer musician Scott Miller, and we are coming to you live telematically from uh, Minnesota. I'm in Woodbury, Minnesota, sort of a little east of the Twin Cities, and Scott's up in Otsego, which is a little bit north of the Twin Cities, and today in our composer, performer, masterclass, we're going to just talk a little bit about our project, our duo, the way we collaborate, uh, give you a little taste of some of the different pieces that we've created over the years, and just give a little insight into our working process and what we're thinking about when we're making these crazy sounds. So this is a, a collaboration that goes back to 2003. I uh, play in a new music ensemble in the Twin Cities called Zeitgeist, and back then we were collaborating with Scott Miller on the creation of a, um, a very large music theater work uh, called Shape Shifting, and it involved uh, live music and live uh, real-time digital processing and poetry and video and lights and a whole bunch of stuff that was really, really fun collaboration. And in the midst of that, uh, Scott and I created our sort of first duo piece uh, because we were really interested in seeing what we could do together. Um, being a new music kind of clarinet player, I'm really interested in... Uh, all the different sounds that I can get on my clarinet and bass clarinet, um, and sounds that are sort of beyond the clarinet's normal capacity for uh, beautiful melodies and incredibly virtuosic passage, passage work. But as we all know, the clarinet is just incredibly flexible and is capable of so many, many different sounds, and I'm really interested in the clarinet just purely as a sound object and a sound-making object. So in this first piece, we wanted to explore some of that Specifically, uh, the bass clarinet without mouthpiece and key clicks and other types of sounds you can make without the mouthpiece to see what would happen if we take these really beautiful yet very tiny sounds and um, put them through the compu computer and really magnify them. And we call this piece the mirror inside. So we're going to give you a little taste of the mirror inside right now. And like I said, uh, this is a bass clarinet without mouthpiece, and uh, certainly one trick I learned, if you've never tried this, uh, have fun with it, is to take the mouthpiece off, but turn the neck around so you can point it right at the microphone and get a really strong signal. So, here we go. probably guess uh, the nature of our collaboration and the nature of the, the music that we create is very, very improvisational, right? Um, and uh, a lot of the pieces we end up doing end up being sort of structured improvisations. We have a, a sense of the large scale shape of the piece, but what happens within each section is really not determined. We just kind of leave it up to our 
um, having fun, interacting with each other. Again, creating sounds, it's, much, it's as much about um, shaping sound as it is anything else. There's certainly stuff you'll hear later where it's more melodic. And, uh, but a lot of what we do, uh, at least on my end, is just really thinking about sound and shaping sound um, using my clarinet. Um, the, the name of our group is Willful Devices. And that we named it that for a reason because, um, you know, I'm manipulating a device, which happens to be the clarinet or the bass clarinet, and Scott's manipulating computers, and we are manipulating these devices to create sounds and to shape sounds. But as we all know very well, sometimes these devices have a mind of their own, and they don't always work the way we expect them to, and they uh, unexpected things happen, and we've just sort of embraced that element of chance and element of things being out of our control is an integral part of our duo collaboration. So that is why we named this uh, project Willful Devices. So um, I've talked a little bit about my end. I'll see what Scott has to say about his end of things on this collaborative journey. Well, as Pat pointed out, the one of the, the elements of our collaboration involves this uh, truly collaborative compositional approach that is founded in part in improvisation, whether it's free improv or structured improvisation. And uh, another aspect, though, is the, um, the, the use of, of uh, real-time interactive electronics, uh, which is a big part of my personal process. Uh, and, and the work that I do um, in general. And that's something that was impacted pretty directly uh, in March of 2020 with the pandemic lockdown. Uh, Pat and I decided that we needed to figure out how to, uh, how, how to keep making music, um, how to uh, keep making music the way we had, which prior to March 2020, uh, would always involve uh, being in the same performance space and sharing that space with microphones and speakers and uh, the instruments that, that Pat's playing and, 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 and the space itself. Uh, and that approach um, has been uh, certainly very fruitful, but it was not at all immediately apparent how we could make that work uh, tr stuck in our own studios um, an hour away from each other uh, on opposite sides of the Twin Cities. So we started exploring what would be possible, how could we possibly um, map what we normally did together in the same space onto the internet. And we began with multiple Skype, FaceTime, and Zoom connections that, uh, that were surprisingly oh. successful. All at the same time, like three, four different devices all open at once. Yeah, it, but and so it was. It was definitely uh, a high risk approach that um, that also just took forever to 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 just to just to get it to work um, <laughs> without horrible feedback or some other thing we couldn't solve immediately. And um, eventually, we settled on using uh, Miller Puckett's Neddy McNett face, which he created as a patch for the program Pure Bit Data, or PD. And uh, this uh, Neddy McNett face is a low latency, high quality audio uh, communication software that is uh, exactly what we were looking for. It allows us to uh, create the kinds of connections um, that we would if we were in the same space together, uh, albeit with um, some latency that is inherent with transmitting sound um, tens or hundreds or thousands of miles um, around the world uh, and back again. And, and so uh, we're, you know, we, we embraced this. Uh, this is one of the things that uh, rather than fight it um, right. and rather than attempt to recreate our um, 
musical practice in the same space, uh, we adapted. And, uh, and, and we're creating an idiomatic, I think, musical practice for this, this internet-based kind of uh, interactivity. Um, there are other things about uh, telematic music making uh, that, um, that we've also had to embrace, one of which is uh, inevitably there will be little dropouts and uh, you know, occasional imperfections in the audio, even though it's, it's very high quality audio. And uh, we've been able to make uh, commercial quality recordings uh, with yes. it. Uh, the, the fact is, is that, that these little clicks and pops are going to work their way in. And, uh, I can edit those out after the fact, or, um, we've, uh, often, uh, adapted the aesthetic of what we're working in so th that it doesn't, it isn't an issue. It doesn't sound, uh, like a mistake or an error when it pops up. Um, and it, uh, and even in some ways informs kind of the direction of, of what we go, uh, where, or how we go with uh, with the, the musical sound. And as, as, as you said the other day, willful devices, right? It, it applies to everything. I'm getting one of those little error messages. I have low disk space, so I need to be <laughs> fixing that afterwards. But hopefully the video and audio are still sounding good. So um, we're going to do another uh, little tester here, just a little sense of how we work uh, in an improvisational setting. Uh, like I said, one of the things I'm doing besides shaping sound is also thinking about issues of control. I play in a certain way, but then Scott is processing my sound in real time, and that is coming back to me in a particular way, and that, that informs how I play. And that will change how I play, or sometimes I'll change how I play so that the computer will change how it processes me. And we can shape textures in certain ways. Sometimes I hear something and it uh, makes me think, oh, I want to try to literally imitate that sound on the clarinet. Other times I'm trying to control it a little more. So we're just going to give a little sense of that with another little free improvisation here. I'm not sure what patch Scott has pulled up here for us to try, but we'll find out. Thank uh you. -huh. 
All right. Well, that was fun for us to do. I hope it was fun to listen to. Uh, you know, one of the other early pieces that uh, Scott and I created together was a piece for bass clarinet and electronic called Fun House. And um, I think that name is really an apt sort of descriptor of so much of what we do. In that piece, um, Scott had created a, a series of basically sonic environments that we would explore, uh, just like you would explore if you were at a fun house in an amusement park. Like, here's the room that's stretched with mirrors that stretch you this way and stretch you that way. And here's the room that's a big wooden tube that you kind of run through. And here's the one where the ground is all wonky and all sort of other stuff. Each room is different and does a different thing and you kind of explore it and play around and have fun. And that's a, a lot of what happened in Fun House. There was just a series of rooms that we would explore. And uh, this is sort of the sort of the same way that Scott creates these amazingly rich sonic environments for us to sort of romp around in and explore. And as I said earlier, sometimes it uh, invites me to change the way I play, uh, change the way I approach uh, playing the clarinet. You know, I sometimes I find myself uh, trying to play the clarinet in a sort of very non-linear fashion, meaning um, my mouth and my embouchure and my tongue and my air are all doing independent things. My two hands are working independently. I'm not trying to coordinate it all together. Instead, uh, my approach at some of these times is very physical on the instrument. I'm just going to apply a lot of different and sometimes contrasting and conflicting physical processes onto the instrument at the same time. It's what Helmut Lachemann referred to as the polyphony of actions. And I'm just going to apply all these different actions to the instrument and see what comes out. Hopefully it's something interesting, something, something I can work with, but I'm, yeah, I'm going to mostly focus on just the physicality of how I'm playing, um, more so than thinking, oh, I'm going to play this note, or I'm going to play this lick, or I'm going to do this. I'm just going to apply physical processes to it. That's kind of how I'm thinking. It's got anything you want to add there? No, no, that, that captures it. <laughs> well, we're, you know, you're interacting in your own physical way with your stuff. Because you're not just setting and forgetting. Like, just as I'm changing, you're changing things as well, correct? Oh, yeah. There is a, a serious polyphony of physical action happening right now, um, <laughs> which is just to talk back to you. <laughs> <laughs> See, exactly. Polyphony of action everywhere. <laughs> Well, that's great. Um, I wanted to mention to all of you out there uh, that there's a, a variety of links that we have associated with this uh, presentation and that you can find, I think, on, on, on the page where this uh, recording is being stored. And uh, I, these are up if you want to check out more of what we do. One of them uh, is called Willful Devices. It's just a CD that we put out. All, all the tracks are on YouTube. So you can listen to that there. You can see videos of us performing on YouTube as well. There's another uh, link that says uh, Contents May Differ, which is a solo CD that I did. But I wanted to put those in there uh, because not only do we create these improvisational structures, but Scott has also written a number of really, really wonderful pieces for clarinet and electronics that are fully written out and fully scored. And, uh, and for some of these pieces, even the media is not at all based on crazy processing. It's entirely fixed. And these are pieces that any one of you could play if you're interested. So on the Willful Devices CD, there's the piece um, Chimeric Night, which is the first track, and Lovely Little Monster, which is the second track. Those are both completely written out and scored and really, really great pieces I highly recommend. And then on the Contents May Differ CD, I would recommend... Um, the title track, which is called Contents May Differ, which is a piece that Scott wrote for me uh, for bass clarinet and fixed media. It's mostly sine tones and some other interesting sounds. It's a really, really gorgeous piece, really fun to play, uh, very well written for the instrument. All these pieces are very well written, so they're not overly challenging, like all the multiphonics and special effects. We've tried them out. They all work really well. And, uh, and I think with, it, with contents may differ, it, that's a totally fixed media. All you'd have to do is have CD playback or any kind of playback of a sound file. And uh, it's a really, really fun piece, so I highly recommend it. Also in the links, you should find a link to um, a place where you can download Nettie McNett Face if you're interested in um, exploring that with uh, other musicians. It, it works for us as a duo, but it's also set up to work with larger ensembles. We've been doing it at times with six different people. Right? I think up to six different people, literally people all over the world. 
people in Minnesota, people in New Zealand, Los Angeles, all over. And it, it's set up to work uh, for multiple musicians all over the place. So we highly recommend Nettie McNett Face if you want to do some telematic um, music making of your own. So uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna conclude our uh, little show here uh, with a piece. Um, that's uh, near and dear to our hearts because, um, as you all know, some very tragic things happened in, in Minnesota last year uh, when, with the murder of George Floyd. And that was a very difficult week for us, uh, us musicians in the Twin Cities because just a few days later we lost a wonderful, wonderful musician, improviser, creator in, this, in the Twin Cities community, uh, a wonderful composer named Carrie Thomas. And so uh, later last uh, last summer, Scott and I created an homage to Carrie Thomas. So we're gonna we're gonna close with that homage. But before we go, I just want to thank again um, Stephanie and Jessica for and everybody else at ICA for putting on this really great festival. I think it's uh, it's a very important thing to do, as we all know. Um, so much of like the identity of our incredible instrument comes from the music that we've created for it. And in this weekend, we're celebrating all this incredible new stuff that's just really keeping the clarinet alive and pushing it into the future in so many wonderful different ways. And Scott and I are very proud to be just one tiny little part of that. So it's a, it's a great instrument we have, and we're also happy that it's, uh, it's so alive and so vital and so many people are creating great work for it. So thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, and we're going to end with our homage to Carrie Thomas. Take care.
behalf of Scott Miller, I'm Pat O'Keefe. Thank you for watching.